did that have its effect in your social life or your education? Mm, yeah, it might cause you severe depression, which might cause you to be hospitalized. Oh, okay. Is that severe? Yeah, that's really severe. Okay, and like uh, those kind of patients, is it because they were not treated at the right time? Yeah, and it's mainly that they don't get the support. Then they're like shunned as they don't have OCD, and then they're like, why is this happening to me? And they enter, enter the depression and it keeps getting worse. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, we're running short of time, so can I have two questions out of the three, please? I'm really sorry. Yeah, the yeah. third question is short, but the mask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our patients are ready to answer. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask the doctor, uh, could a normal, normal person develop or sleep from, you know, constantly doing the same things without even being conscious of it? Well, no. OCD is mainly when your thought is uh, invading your conscious mind. If it's subconscious, it's not really OCD, it's just a thought. Oh, it's, uh, that's how it is, like, it's yeah. not conscious. You, you know what you're doing, You right? know, like, your repetitive acts, are, uh, your compulsions are conscious. I think she meant if a person doesn't have OCD in the beginning, then he develops it later. Um, you know, a person might have traces of OCD in the beginning, but then, yeah, they, they, they can develop later. You start wasting one hour as a total, then four hours as a total. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Um, doctor is the center of the <laughs> <laughs> So I'm asking Dr. Could you please tell us from um, what school of psychology do you come from? School of psychology? Behavior. Okay. So he was in behavioral psychology. That's nice. And uh, just to um, show you guys about the no, time. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to check the treatment for both of them. Did it take the same amount of time? Was case was more severe? Well, this case was more severe. He didn't really need medication because severe cases go up to 150 times checking the same thing. But you used to check 30, 40. I used to just go with the, cognitive, the social cognitive behavior where I limit his amount of time. I sit with him. I keep telling him, don't go check your car love again again. He used to come to my appointments later as well. <laughs> <laughs> that there's not going to be a catastrophic sort of outcome. So a lot of them have this fear that if I don't, there's going to be a catastrophe of some kind, or there's going to be some kind of tragedy, or they, they associate it with damage or problem, or, yeah, so you were able to teach them that yeah, if I don't check, nothing will happen. Yeah, that's part of the cognitive therapy. Where I tell, uh, in, in Zen's case, I kept explaining him that even if you don't arrange it and you go ahead with the exam, you will still pass it. It doesn't bother you. Or the uh, rulers won't fall out of the stable. And in, um, in my case, for example, in case, it was like if the water heat, uh, if the car lock doesn't the lock once, the possibility of a person checking the car is one in a thousand. So it might not be him. Whose, whose cars get stolen. So like, did it actually happen after the treatment that you know you didn't check your car out that, that much and you came back, your car was in shape and you felt like, yay. Did you have that moment? Yeah, I felt like, oh, how, how did I feel when I had OCD? You know, there's my car, nothing's happening. Oh, okay. kind of that's, that's really amazing. So and then when you were looking at the bathroom scene, did you still feel like you wanted to rearrange everything in that bathroom? Yeah, yeah. 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 I arranged everything. Yeah, I stopped being the bathroom shampoo. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, he needs another appointment. I'm telling you. <laughs> and uh, like, do you, do you think a screen also makes him adjusting? Like, it's not over. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. My OCD. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it's driving me nuts actually. I think I should check with you because like, I've been fidgeting with that. To raise that. Sure, but yeah, next 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 episode we'll have that fixed. So, I assure you guys. So yeah, we saw and I just, I just like to say that these two are different types of OCD, right, doctor? He, he has an OCD which can be classified as arranging and counting, where he has to have everything in order and everything arranged, and until it feels right, that is his type of OCD. His, uh, I think your innermost obsession, your obsessive thought is that it should be right, everything should feel right, and that led to the obsession of arranging everything, yeah. the compulsion of arranging everything. And for him, in his case, his type is known as checkers. So he's ordered and he's checker. For him, his fear is that he's going to harm himself, he's going to harm others, there's going to be something bad happening. That kind of an obsessive thought led into the compulsive behavior of checking everything. We have come to the end of our first session. Thank you so much, Dr. Roy, Walter Zen, as well as Walter Wall. Chocolate makers who are spreading awareness about OCD to everyone in the form of chocolate.
tell everybody about what you heard. Tell everybody about OCD so that we all know that OCD is something which can be cured, which says go OCD, go away. We have the brother of Walter Zen who's going to come here. He's his twin brother. He's going to explain a little about the misconceptions. Welcome. Hey. Sir. Yeah. Professor Samine, what do you think about the uh, presentation? I think that I will sue you if you don't move the camera. <laughs> 